Recently I went on a hike in the Tatra mountains and these are my 10 conclusions on how to improve my experience for the next time. Let's start with the easiest one. In uh, many European national parks there are a ban on flying drones without permission from the local authorities or local park. I didn't fly my drone at all and I kept it in the, my backpack entire time. When I came back at home, I started to think why do I need it at all and why do I need to carry dead weight if I won't even use it. Next time if I see that there is a restriction on flying drones in the area where I'm planning to hike, I won't even bother to putting this drone inside my backpack and uh, my total weight will be reduced. Next, I brought two lenses, a 20 to 60 mm lens and a 50 mm lens with an aperture 1.8. However, I mainly used only 20 to 60 mm, maybe used only once my 50 mm lens during the time lapse shooting. As I remember, it was in the city, not even in the mountain. So, once again, it was a dead weight in the mountains and uh, maybe my 20 to 60 mm lens is not ideal for this type of adventure, this type of shooting and uh, I need to upgrade to something more versatile to get more reach in the distance but for now when I choose between these two lenses 20 to 60 and 50 I will select 20 to 60 mm lens and uh, my 50 mm can stay at home and uh, my bag will thank me again. Conclusion number three is about my sleeping bag. And conclusion is that it was not suitable for this season, for summer season, because comfort temperature of the sleeping bag is 11 degrees with a limit of 7 degrees and extreme was minus 5 degrees. During this hike we always stayed in the huts because wild camping in the national park is not allowed. Since it was the end of summer, the nights was pretty warm and taking into account that where we were sleeping in the hut, it was even warmer. So like temperature during the night didn't drop below 15 degrees. And uh, my idea is that for upcoming hiking seasons, I should consider buying another sleeping bag or even a liner because liner is uh, maybe even a better idea. It is a uh, small, lightweight and compact. I can combine with my existing sleeping bag in case if I will hike during the more colder temperatures, I can combine those two and uh, use during the cold season but for summer season I can use just the liner again it will save me space and weight. Next always take gloves with you as you can see I don't have them and this was maybe some kind of mistake from my side. You will encounter tough terrain such as sharp rocks or sections of the trail where you may need to use chains to ascend or descend and gloves will protect your hands and provide additional grip especially if the chains are wet from continuous rainfall and uh, the main criteria for gloves is that it must have some water resistance in case if it is raining and you need to actively use your hands. Next one is kind of embarrassing for myself, but uh, it is still worth mentioning, at least for myself, for the future hiking. Deodorant. Always take deodorant with you. After first day of hiking in the mountains, you will stink like a... You will stink. Uh, and you will stink a lot. Luckily, I was staying in the mountain huts, so there was a opportunity and a possibility to take showers or use sink to somehow wash your armpits and so on. But on the last day, on the way home, after continuous hike for around 12 kilometers, we went straight from the mountains to the bus and uh, I'm feel terribly sorry for the person who was sitting next to me all that way to Riga because I probably was thinking a lot I'm once again I'm really sorry. Conclusion number six or should I say my desire number six 
is to buy the B camera. While I was in the mountains, Sony announced the new A7C Mark II camera. And when I was purchasing my first full-frame camera, I had to choose between Lumix S5 and uh, Sony A7C Mark I camera. And uh, I ended up buying Sony, sorry, Lumix S5. But now I realize that for this type of adventures where lightweight and compact equipment is needed, Sony A7C would have been the better choice due to its form factor. So maybe in the nearest future I will buy the Sony A7C and we'll have two cameras for this type of shots. Lumix and for hiking adventures where you need lightweight equipment I will use Sony A7C Mark II. And speaking of cameras, conclusion number seven will be about taking my GoPro next time for shots like this when it's pouring rain and you don't expect to stop to take out or put in your main camera the GoPro would be the best option to shoot in these kind of conditions because it is waterproof of course my Lumix S5 is also waterproof but the mic is not waterproof and also you always are kind of worried about your expensive equipment but about GoPro I may be not so worried about because it's already somehow damaged and experience drops so just like for extreme conditions it's better to use this kind of cameras. I'm glad that previous topic brought us to the discussion of uh, rain conditions because the next two topics will be about that. Remember always to place essential items or clothes that need to stay dry into the dry bag inside the backpack. Even though my bag is uh, water resistant and uh, most of it remained dry after the heavy rain, the bottom part uh, got a bit wet and some clothes became humid. But overall I am happy and want to say thank you to Shimoda for creating this bag. However, next time to prevent clothes from becoming humid, I will need and I will use a dry bag. On this hike I brought raincoat from Decathlon specifically for the occasion of heavy rain. However, when I needed to put it on during the downpour it was quite uncomfortable and uh, I didn't want to take off my backpack so the back part of the raincoat ended up stretching over the backpack and uh, leaving some parts exposed to the rain. And I realized that I need a rain poncho that can be worn over myself and over the backpack to provide like double protection for my gear. It is worth mentioning that I had a special rain cover for my backpack. However, when it, starting, uh, when it started pouring, I didn't have time to put it on. Uh, the rain caught us by surprise. And now let's speak about the two most important conclusions that I made. Number nine will cover meal preparation. For this hike I brought uh, four packages of rice and four packages of buckwheat. But I only realized my mistake when I got to the mountains. Each package of this rice and buckwheat weighs around 400 grams. And doing some calculation and getting a total weight of 3 kilos and 200 grams for just this ingredient, it was a big mistake. And additionally, I spent around 12 to 20 minutes preparing each package. But now I understand that this type of meal needs to be prepared at home before hiking and then it needs to be dehydrated and this will allow me to save more than 80% of weight per bag, reducing it from 400 to around 80-90 grams. And by doing this for all 8 packages, I would save a total weight of around 2.5 kilos. It is very big amount of weight. And last but not least, always check the planned route from A to Z 
and ensure that you are capable of completing it. Do not blindly trust your more, like way more experienced partner. This was my mistake, or rather I was quite confident in my abilities. However, my confidence was based on my experience with uh, flatland hiking, not on tackling big mountains with uh, steep elevation. So now I know my limits and uh, next time I will plan and apply that knowledge accordingly. If you want to see the great views that I experienced during the hike in the Tatra mountains, click here. And again, I have a company here. Future Thomas, don't forget to take the odorant next time.